Very interesting. And it looks like we do have our second player joining. All right, so I'm gonna do their tags just like they're written here. We've got curve, and we, we have got the bar 101. Yes, we do. We should. Let me check this picture. And I believe this is another winner's round two match. This is this is C2 versus C10. I think this is actually quarters now. Nope, quarters would be two versus seven. Okay, this is this is winner's round <laughs> two. Wait, I mean, this sorry, is round two. Sorry, this is this is. I'll 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 double check. And we're kicking right off. It looks like we're starting Pokemon Stadium. Oh, I thought I thought we were almost gonna have an SD there to start things off. That would have been a little bit unfortunate. With a double dash attack from Snake. Yeah, two, these two characters, both very strong projectile zoners on Wi-Fi. So we're definitely gonna see some some slower gameplay. Snake is actually really, really good. These projectile setups on the platform were definitely going well for him. Yeah, Snake is a character that can cover a lot of options. So this is round three, so I do actually think this is this is quarters. But I'm gonna double check just to make sure. But either way, this is still gonna be a best of three. Oh, no directional air dodge. Oh, oh and he's able to live. Saved himself with the C4. That was like millimeters away from the blast zone. That and he gets the KO with another C4. That was incredible. He had one on stage, had to detonate it before he could pull out another one and still had time to recover. And we're gonna have an early lead for Curve? Uh, let's go with, yeah, let's go with Curve. I, I like that. Snake, one character you don't want to fall behind against. He can force a lot of trades just by pulling a grenade. And uh, it's a very unfavorable position. And also just like trying to find your way in through kind of like the minefield he creates is like almost impossible. Especially for somebody with such a big body like Rob. Yeah, and we see a great job by Curve just keeping Akabar trapped at the ledge. Able to score another KO. Yeah, so this is quarters. All right. Um, so one of these players is going to be making in into the top eight winner side. And as of right now, it looks like it's going to be Curve. Um, yeah, very strong start. Up three stocks to one. It looks like he has a lot of mastery of just grenade pulling using all of his projectiles to zone the Rob out. It's a very dominant display so far. Yeah, and he's honestly not that far away from taking the Rob stock. With this much rage, he actually isn't going to need much before he can take another one of Rob's stocks. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a 3 stock here. Oh, good. But as I say there. that, <laughs> Akabar manages to get on the board. Our first case of commentator's curse. <laughs> but it's still not looking too great from him. Curve doing some cool um some cool grenade play there too. Uh, he did like a grenade into a Z drop into like an immediate jump catch. Um, which just allows you to move a little bit better with the grenade in your hand than the like base movement while holding a grenade. Oh and Makita will do it. Yeah, like I said, great mastery of all his projectiles. Using his grenades, C4, and Nikita to great effect. Alright, so that's game one. So I'll check in on the players, see what they're going to do for stages and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think a big thing for Akabar is just trying not to fall behind and lose that early lead because it can snowball from there. So, Curve is banning Kalos and Yoshis. So we'll have to see where where Akabar takes him for the counter pick. You tend to want to take Snake to, to stages where he can't kind of like get away from you. So I'd like to see him go FD. Yeah, I think FD would be a really strong pick. Yeah, I think that's usually what, what Snakes end up banning, but... Um, and also just eliminating the platforms and taking away places for him to put the C4 and yeah. to, to place his explosives helps to limit his options. Okay, so they're going to town and city. 
So this isn't awful. Also a good pick, the small blast zones on the side make it so Rob uh, can get really early kills. Yeah. His side B is very powerful. Back air. We'll have to see whether he's going to stay Rob too, but... That's true. I imagine he probably will. Yeah, and another benefit of town actually is a lot of Snake's kills are off the top of the screen, like his up tilt, for example, yep. and his C4. And town has the highest ceiling, so... Good way to just live a little bit longer versus Snake's vertical kills. Yeah. This will be a little bit, um... A little bit tough if Curve kind of, like, commits to camping on those platforms. And, um... Not interacting. But we'll see whether he has the, um... The patience to kind of commit to that. I know that's not actually the easiest thing. Um, but we'll have to see. So far, this is looking a little bit better for... Akabar? Akabar? I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. Good sticky there. I can't tell whether the C... Okay, I was going to say, I can't <laughs> tell whether the C4 is still on him. I'm, I'm never <laughs> sure whether it, like, it has fallen off because of RNG or whether it's like... It's still going, or, or where it is, um, but very good awareness on his part to get that that, uh, that C4 detonation. Yeah, and already sealing a stock here. It looks like we might have a repeat of last game. Yeah, only 40%. He's not anywhere near um, like a percent where he's gonna die. And last game, we really saw that Akabar like wasn't really able to get anywhere close to, to curve to get any sort of like good kill setups either. And right now we're kind of seeing that again. Yeah, and that's what you don't want to see. Akbar getting a little antsy, dash attacking into the shield when the grenade was pulled. Not dealing any percent to snake and just getting blown up by the grenade. Yeah, you can tell he's like trying to sit back a little bit more now, but when you're this far behind, you like. You, you can't really afford to sit back. Like yeah, you, you, you do have to find something. something. Yeah. Been losing track of that uh, that C4 there. And another C4 KO. You see Curve doing a great job of just running away, throwing the grenades. That was really good. Down tilt grab, down throw up smash. That was very, very good. Ooh, gets another sticky. These stickies have been really, really good. <laughs> I have a hard time, like, when I'm playing Snake, I have a hard time, like, getting stickies. And he's just, like, he has so many different setups for them. Yeah, it looks like it has transferred over to Snake. Oh, and then it fell off. It was on the stage. It can be really hard to keep track of the C4 because uh, after it stops flashing with the little red light, it's very hard to find. Also in this matchup, since Rob has a flashing light on his head, it makes it even more confusing. Oh, because can you get the C4 like placed near your head? Yeah, if you're if the C4 is stuck on Rob's head and his light on his head's also flashing, it's hard to tell if the C4 is oh, there. Oh, I didn't even know about that. That's kind of crazy, actually. Great coverage of the landing there from Akbar. Not quite getting the KO, but the Ford Smash yep. will. That was definitely good coverage. And there, the, the high ceiling might have saved Akabar there. Giving him a chance. He, he's on the same stock. Down tilt to grab. Ooh, he lands on the... Oh, I was going to say, he lands on the gyro. There's actually, like, a chance for a big combo to happen there. But Kurt does take it. Yeah, unfortunately, he missed his forward air out of that up throw. Yeah. And so even with the gyro there kind of helping him out, Snake was able to just mash his up tilt. That was good, um, good adaptation though, for sure. Yeah, definitely a lot closer than the first game. Kept it very even.